Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us worship Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you are no name is Emmanuel. Amen. Father God, in the name that is above every other name. I want to come to you this hour on this platform, the platform of the National Prayer Altar, where we are dealing with the nation of Kenya and where I am dealing with the Kenyans themselves. And I want to, to bless your name. Thank you for our Sunday service. I want to commit it into your hands. I rededicate ourselves today to you. I rededicate the intercessors. I rededicate us. I rededicate even the members online. I rededicate whatever we are doing today into your hands. I pray that your hand will continue moving with us. Your hand will continue speaking and spreading your masses upon our lives. Father, I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. What a wonderful time. What a wonderful hour. Every time, and I will still continue saying it, I long for Sunday service to be together with you and have communion of the Word of God together. Amen. I think one of these days I'll ask, I will pray about it, but I wouldn't mind having a Holy Communion with the intercessors in this nation online and also those that follow me, the partners, that God will renew our strength. God will help us in these six months of the year that is remaining. These are six months, January, February, March, April, May, June. And we are entering July, August, September, October, November, December. This finishing six months, we need to have a communion together so that God can renew our strength and that his promises will follow us and God is going to bless us. Amen. I pray that I will have it. Amen. Do you have my number? Have you been partnering with Apostle Damaris? Have you been saying, woman of God, God is really helping you to reach to my heart. God is gracing you to open my eyes through the word of God. Kindly, I want you to partner with me and those that have been partnering with me, I don't take it for granted because the economy also is not right, but God is going to reward you. God is going to save you from the harsh atmosphere of finances in this nation. And I'm still trusting God what he said. From the month of August, we shall start seeing some fruits. <laughs> and God is going to bless you for supporting me. Thank you for you that have been praying together with me, and you have been saying, woman of God, everything you say, it has come to pass. It is the masses of God. 
God bless you for that in Jesus name. Now this is my pay bill number kindly send me your 1000, send me your 500 shillings, send me your tithes and God is going to bless you that I may continue being on air in Jesus name. This is my pay bill number 400222 and my account number is 1739983 and God is going to bless you. Send it to my transaction number and this is 0746553997. Amen. Now, today I want us to talk about how the word of God can release an inner impartation. You read the word of God and the word of God, the presence of God fills your spirit. And There are two dimensions of impartation or three but I'm going to talk about two when you read the word of God when you are studying the word of God the word of God becomes flesh the word of God becomes flesh the bible says in in, in John chapter 1 Jesus came in form of flesh he was the word but he came in form of flesh he was the word and he is the word he came in form of flesh like a human being to show us that when you read the word of god the word of god becomes flesh you can eat it you can hold it when the bible says you shall not die you shall live that is in psalms uh, 118 and verses uh, 17 118 and verses 17 maybe you can look at it because it is good to look at it sometimes when you have so many scriptures 118 and verses aha uh-huh. let me see 118 this is what the bible says 118 and verses 17 i will not die but live and declare the works of the lord when you go to psalm 16 psalm 16 the bible says in verses 1 Psalm 16 and verses 1 Preserve me O God for in you do I put my trust You are telling God preserve me so arrows come during the day arrows arrows are words they are words somebody can say you will not prosper it is an arrow you will not live it is an arrow you will die it is an arrow now when these scriptures you read them and Maybe you've gone to the doctors they have given you a bad report but you are standing with that word number one, not that you will not be treated by the doctors there are sicknesses that must go through treatment and there are sicknesses that just die by the word amen now you get healed through all the process something that another one would not have been healed god uses the same same treatment to see you through yes yes and there are others that god will release just the healing to glorify himself in different way now it means that you have received an impartation the word becomes flesh you find that you are going every process you are taking medication or you are just your marriage is scattered but god has you have stood with the word of god and you have told god bind us together with cords that can never be broken yeah <laughs> that word become true you go through battles you go through shaking your business goes empty but at the end of it you will not close it it will be revived again that is number one impartation number two impartation i'm teaching to it is through reading the word of god and the presence of god surrounds you there are times i read the word of god and the presence of god you know the atmosphere changes the atmosphere changes and you start understanding the word of god in a different dimension and your word enters you even in your dreams your word the word that you have read is just ringing in your spirit just that the way you can be listening to music listen to music and then when you go to sleep the same music is playing or you are talking 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 with persons talking 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 when you go to sleep you are just talking with the same person that is the way the word of god becomes i want to explain something before i read the word of god in the spirit realm life is spiritual life is spiritual 
Nothing happens here on earth without it happening in the spirit realm. Death. If in the spirit realm there is no death, even if you get sick, even if you get an accident, you will still come out alive. Yes. You may break your feet or not. Yes. Even if you have HIV, even if you have whatever, what kills others will not kill you. Do you know that you can have HIV? You are still taking medication and God has healed you in the spirit realm. And physically you are not healed. And you find that you have gotten even 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years in the same, same sickness. Many have died, but you are still alive taking medication. But in the spirit, you are healed. But if your name in the spirit is dead, if you are in the grave, if you are in the coffin, you will die unless you are pastor or you pray against untimely death. Let me tell you something. Life is spiritual. And that is why Christians, we should desire the word of God because it will remove you. I had a minister of the gospel. Sorry, I don't mention this and I don't talk about it. He was preaching. Somebody sent me. I don't visit those things. Somebody sent me and say, and the preacher, please, I'm not correcting. Get me right. I'm not correcting. Everybody has their own way of teaching. And I don't know why I'm saying it. Listen, he was saying that he stopped praying in tongues. Of course, he's praying in tongues, but he's been telling God to help us to pray in an understanding for an hour. And he was speaking, kindly get me right. I don't fight ministers of the gospel and I am not. I'm trying to correct something because I'm an intercessor. He's saying that we pray, people pray in tongues one hour until they sweat, but they come out poor. We, it is true. But do you know praying in tongues, Praying in tongues, you go beyond the physical into the spiritual. You may pray in tongues and become poor, but the other things you are fighting. You may pray in tongues and you are not healed, but the other things, dimensions, you are resting in the spirit realm. I want to correct something. You can never pray in tongues and you go wrong. If you have the right spirit, you cannot go wrong. When you pray with English, you pray in Kiswahili, you pray in Kikuyu, you pray in Lo, one hour. God will hear, but the effects are very less. But when I pray in tongues, I may not see anything. I lived a life. I used to pray. I'm not seeing anything. But I was fighting battles of ancestors. I was fighting battles that were surrounding me. And I was using the word of God. And when I was done, my time came. Amen. So, the word of God, you get impartation when you read it and the word of God becomes a reality in your lives. It becomes a presence. I cannot fail having the word of God. I cannot fail. Yes, me, I pray for hours in tongues. I do, very rare you find me praying in my own words. I will take a scripture. I'll pray. I'll say the Bible says, Father, I start my prayer after the order of Luke chapter 13. You know, I'll speak, repro, I will fight battles and I'll get the results. Amen. The reason why we are not getting the results is because we are not entering into a dimension. The word of God will help you grow in the presence of God. You read the word of God and atmosphere changes. Yes, I've done it. So you receive impartation. When you read the word of God, it becomes flesh. It becomes a reality. It becomes a garment. The same way I cannot go anywhere naked. I cannot come out from my bathroom, you know, naked. And, you know, unless I'm alone, I cannot go open the gates or go to church naked. That is the way the word of God becomes a reality in your life. That is why Jesus, in Revelation, his gowns were written. His gown was written, the word, because he was the word. Amen. Yes. 
impartation. I'll give you a final impartation, but before I give to you, let's go to John. The word became flesh. John chapter 1, the word became flesh. I, the word became flesh. People do prophetic actions. I also do them, but I do them according to the word of God. And there are people who will do prophetic action and they become spiritual witches. They are born again, but they are spiritual witches. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen what the Bible says so that you can understand what I'm saying. Verses 14. First number one, chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. That was. He, in him was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Karma, if you have not reached to a place, you read the word and the word becomes tangible. You need to pray for yourself. You need to pray. You need to read the word and the word becomes part of you. The same way you go to the hospital, God forbid, and the doctor tells you this is a flu gone. You know, take one in the morning, take one lunchtime, take one in the evening. So one, one times three. That is the same way the word should be, one times three, one times six, according to the way you enjoy reading. Not one times one, mm -mm. not one times two, mm -mm. one times three, or one times four, or one times five, or one times twenty, or one times a hundred, the way you can read. But maxima, minima, it is one times three. The same way you take your lunch, breakfast, lunch, and supper. That is the way you are supposed to read, and that is why you, how you are supposed to pray. Yes, what did David say in Psalms? Oh, God help me. In Psalms 55, what did David say? That I will pray in the morning, I will pray in the lunchtime, if afternoon, and I will pray in the evening. The same way you pray. You cannot pray without having the word of God in you. Amen. The Bible says, Psalms 55 and verses 17, evening and morning. And at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. What about Daniel? Daniel prayed three times per day. Remember when there was judgment, and it was like nobody should pray any other god apart from the gods of the land. <laughs> there was a letter that was written. What does the Bible say? Daniel chapter 6. In verse 10, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did before time. It was a habit he used to do. So you have to read your word one times three and above. Amen. How? Do we get impartation through the word of God? How? How? The third one. Maybe I can give you the third one. Look at Luke chapter 13. Laying of hands. Yes, through the word. Laying of hands. Jesus laid the hands, his hands on the sick. Remember, he also touched the coffin that was burying a son of a widow. The widow lost the wife and the husband. And then she's going to bury the son. And Jesus looked at her and everybody stopped and everything stopped, he touched the coffin, and he spoke, and the boy came back to life. Laying of hands. Not, let me tell you something that you do not know, and this is a secret that I'm going to tell you. Do you know any time somebody puts their hands on you, that it is a covering? Mm -hmm. Any preacher, even the Freemasons, even demonic people, you have a pastor, why do you give your heads to everybody? Why? If you come to chariots of fire and I'm your pastor, yes, you come to the house of prayer, I teach you. Why do you then go give your head to somebody else? Every time somebody prays for you, every time somebody prays for you, they put a covering. Your pastor comes, I bless you today. There is a covering like a small kakofia. You know, the small one, like the Hebrew, the, the one 
in a shonangwa, the knitted one, eh? Then you go, you find another pastor. Oh, pray for me, I'm sick. Oh, pray for me, I'm going through a hard time. Pray for me for impartation. They put another covering on top of your pastor's covering. That is if your pastor is not strong. You go to another one. So, no matter how hard your pastor will speak over your lives, as long as there are other covering on top, the word will never. That's why people say, me, that church, I don't get anything. Why? Because you gave yourself to somebody else. There is a way you receive impartation. So how do we do it? We nullify. Yes, I nullify. I remove that covering. I put my hand on you. You may not understand. Look at Luke chapter 13. How Jesus healed the lady that was suffering from infirmity. He spoke his word. The word of God, when you read it, it releases an impartation to become something. If you are reading about scriptures, like 1 Corinthians chapter 12, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father, give me the gift of discernment. I've known that. Open my eyes. You find your eyes are being opened. Open my spiritual ears. You find, why? There is the impartation of the word of God. Amen. The Bible says, verses 12, Luke 13, 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. It is the word. Woman, you are loosed from infirmity. Maybe I'm praying over something that is troubling me. And I read that scripture. I'll say, woman, Jesus has said it. Thou art loosed from your infirmity. You infirmity hear the word of Jesus. Luke 13 verses 12. The Bible says, I am loosed. I may not be loosed that time. But I'll continue praying that word until it becomes. And then you're like, ah, you even will not know when a challenge is going. You will not even know. But you realize and say, ah, I don't feel pain anymore. And as you say, I'm not feeling pain anymore. You find that yourself, you got healed. And then what does the Bible say in verses 13? And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. That is how the word of God works. That is how the word of God works. Paul was speaking to his son, Timothy, and he said, don't be quick to lay hands on anybody. Why? Because in the hands, there is impartation. Look at Timothy. Look at 1 Timothy, and we read it. 1 Timothy chapter, look at Timothy chapter, ah, chapter 4 and verses 14. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given you by prophecy, by speaking, by speaking. You may not have any gift. And this is what many intercessors, many men of God forget. You do not have any gift. But the man of God or the woman of God that you are submitting to put their hands on you and says from today, see, from today, fight my battles. So God will start revealing to you battles of the past that you fight. And then you start feeling you are there. You are the, the king. You are the Alpha and Omega. And that is how divination is entering. You are a pastor. Your pastor lays hands on you to do what is needed to be done. You find cripples are walking, the blind eyes are seeing, the deaf ears are. And you are like, ah, I think I'm better than my pastor. And your pastor have never even brought the dead to life, but you have brought. But you have forgotten that there is the word you have spoken over your life that you will be a prophet to the nation. You know, you will excel in business. Yes, you will excel. Go prosper, bring your tithes. That's what I tell my members. I tell them, this week, prosper, bring your tithes. And then they prosper, they eat their tithes. They will not prosper. They prosper, they bring their tithes, and then I send them again. Then they bring. That's how we make millionaires in our churches. Yes, by releasing. The Bible says in a given prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the Presbyterians, these are elders. Elders in the Bible is the pastors with authority. Is, is not the elders in church. How can an elder lay hands on you when you have a pastor? I, that is breaking protocol. Yes, 
Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 what the Bible says. Therefore, first second letter of Paul to Timothy his son in chapter 1 verse 6. Wherefore I put you in remembrance Timothy that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. Reading the word of God will give you impartation. Father, I need to overcome my battles. And then you go, you read the word, you understand it, you go to your pastor. And learn not to go to your pastor's empty-handed. Nobody visits a witch empty-handed. Why are you visiting your pastor empty-handed? Even Saul himself, he asked his servant in 1 Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 9. He asked his servant very well, Yes, there is a prophet, there is a priest, there is a seer. What are we going to take to him? Nobody goes empty-handed. Mm-mm. Nobody. But today people visit their pastors empty-handed. Mm? You don't visit pastors empty-handed. It's not about bribing. No, no, no. It's not about bribing. It's not about bribing. Listen. Verse 7. This is what the Bible says. Then Saul said to his servant, "But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man of no, the man?" Chapter 9, first Samuel chapter 9 verse 7. Then said Saul to his servant, "But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a, pre- a presence to bring to him to bring to the man of God. What have we?" And the servant answered Saul again and said, "Behold, I have here at a hand the fourth part of shekel of silver that I will give to the man of God to tell us our way why do you go empty handed to men of God why do you go no matter how little it is never go empty handed amen never go empty handed to your pastor when you are going to that office even if it is the little you have never go empty handed when you go to church Don't go empty-handed. Save from Monday to Saturday. Save even if it's ten shillings that you can afford. I started giving an offering of ten, many years. Ah, it was my gold, even five shillings. It was my precious stone. Yes, it was. I remember one time I went somewhere in Nairobi, and the minister of God was preaching. He was a guest, and I didn't have anything. And the bishop said, "I want people to come here. Fifty thousand, ten thousand, five thousand. They came. Me had two hundred shillings. I said, 'Mm-hmm, that is my fifty thousand.' He didn't say that. Don't come. No. When he called everything, I went like that woman that gave an offering, and Jesus was looking at her. Even the two hundred shillings, I didn't know whether I would get it. Don't do that." For me, that was my fifty thousand, and I went. I never returned. I met with the minister that was preaching on that day when we went somewhere to preach, and he was one of the guests. And I said, "I am going to be a blessing to him." After we had eaten as ministers of the gospel, I told him, "You know what? You came to such and such church in Nairobi." you preached and this is the message you preached and people came to the front to give i had only 200 shillings i said kindly man of god we are preaching together don't forget that the same altar and is a big man i said take this this is my 200 shillings that i vowed before god he looked at me and laughed and then i said okay i want now to bless you the money that was supposed to be given that i came in front for i'm giving to you i counted and i said god bless you sir is never seen like that never i made a vow it was hard to fulfill so you give what you have no matter how it is so that in the time of your abundance you will be free to give what you want to give impartation of the word of god Yes. The Bible says that he said and when Jesus saw her he called her to him and said to her woman you are loosed from your infirmity and he laid his hands on 
the word Jesus gives you in dreams, in visions, that by the ministers of the gospel brings impartation. Do you know impartation is not only giving, impartation is also joining. Like now, how we pray together, how you support, how you listen to me, you receive an impartation. Are you born again? Are you saying, woman of God, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior? Today I want to make a decision. I want my name to be written in the book of life. Pray this prayer with Apostle Damaris and God is going to bless you. Father, just as I am, I come to you. Forgive me, wash my sins, cleanse my garments, and write my name in the book of life. And from today, Jesus, I confess that you are my Jesus and my Savior in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate people that are coming to the Lord and sending me message. They have received Jesus through this telecast. God bless you. God keep you. And they're asking me, where can I go to church? And I'm asking them, which location are you? And I'm directing them to churches that I know. I'm asking, which churches are around you? They are saying, and I'm telling them, here you will grow. If you are in Embu County, I'm telling them to come to church and God is helping us. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for those that have given their lives to Jesus. I want to thank you. Write their names in the book of life. Show them a church with the right doctrine and the right pastor that they may grow. And let God reign over you in Jesus' name. I want to pray for my partners today. I want to pray for the tithers. I want to pray for those that give me the little they can, that your pockets will never dry. Because of partnering with me, I tie you around my wings and around my waist. That God will prosper you. God will make you. God will honor you. God will quench the sun that is burning your head and your finances that this is the time of harvest you are going to harvest. Because of partnering with me, let the hand of God continue being with you. May God fight your battles, the God that I serve. And I deploy the angelic ministry to serve you in another dimension, and God is going to be glorified. Thank you, Father, for the online church. I bless them. I pray that peace, and I bring them under the canopy of the Holy Spirit. Hide them. Preserve them, show them mercy, bless them, and let them testify in Jesus' name. Do you have my number? Are you saying, woman of God, I want to partner with you with 1,000, with 500 shillings? This is my pay bill number, 400-222. My account number is 173-9983 hash. Send your transactions to my MPESA number 746 Five five three nine nine seven, and it's on four, on the screen. And God is going to bless you. Always remember that where there is a prophet, there is a testimony. And by the hand of Apostle Damaris, signs and wonders and miracles are your portion today. God bless you.